Hi everybody, this is Anne. This video is dedicated to all those potters who are looking for ways to improve their design skills. I'm going to explain why some pieces of pottery really stand out more than others, and give you a checklist of design elements to remember as you consider and make your pottery choices. Inspiration for how you want to design your pottery can come from anywhere, including your own imagination. I like to look at nature for inspiration, whether it is from the flowers Jim grows or at the birds who come to visit. I don't have to go very far. All these pictures were taken right from our backyard. I then like to do sketches so I can incorporate them later into my work. I was taught that when you make pottery, to consider all aspects of the piece before you get started, and that includes all the elements of design, which include texture, line, form, space, and color. As pottery is a three-dimensional surface, people are not only going to look at your pottery, but if it's functional, they're going to pick it up and use it. You want a surface that's interesting and comfortable to touch. The choices are unlimited with ideas on how to texture your clay, but in this video, I decided to do some carving. That leads me to the question of how I'm going to carve my design. Carving's made up of a series of lines, whether they're thin, thick, long, or short. They can define the surface and create interest to your piece. Each carving tool here is shaped so it'll result in a different line, and it's important to experiment with them to see which will get your job done. This particular tool gives you more of a thin V shape that will cut as deep or thinly as you need it to go. I can curve it around easily for this type of effect. Here's a piece I created just using a V-shape tool. A U-shape bend creates more wider and rounder cuts. You can see those wider and deeper cuts on this piece. I can even use something like a trimming tool if I want. This will give you wide flat lines. And here's a tool with a rounded edge. I found that if I push the end into the clay and then twisted it at the bottom, I could get a nice petal shape. That gives me some ideas. Now let's talk about deciding on the form of your piece. If your pottery is functional, then you have to take that into account. Other than that, perhaps you want the design to echo your inspiration with a ruffled flowery rim or rigid geometric lines. Making it completely sleek or round for a nice canvas. You can push in areas to create lobes. You can even combine a geometric oval shape with organic carved lines. As my inspirations from nature, this elongated flower petal vase is one that I finally decided on for my piece today. I threw it and let it dry to leather hard. Space can be very complicated as I think about not only how to divide the main form into spaces, but I also need to consider the positive and negative spaces for my carving too. I can divide it horizontally. I can divide it diagonally. I can even divide it vertically. Remembering that an odd number of spaces is more interesting than an even amount, and that dividing it anywhere but the center point can create an interesting tension, I decided to divide the space into thirds along the top section. Color can also be a complicated element as you get into shades, hues, and color mixtures, so I thought I'd keep it simple and just choose one solid color for my piece. I made this green slip by combining the watery slip from my reclaim bucket and a blue-green mason stain that I had. I used a hacky brush to apply three layers of slip on the bottom section and the stem and let that dry to leather hard. For the carving, I started with the thin V tool to create the first line which will be my stem. Notice that I'm starting in the white section of clay and going over the border of the green and I give it a gentle curve for interest. With the round carving tool, I figured out I can make offshoots from the stem and continued that pattern at an angle on each side of the stem to create an almost braided pattern.
As I twist the tool at the end of the carving, it creates a point on the end of the pedal. Again, I'll carve a stem, this time mirroring the curve of the first stem, but not making it so long. This gives the eye a sense of completion, like a set of parentheses around a statement. Again, I added more fern leaves in that slanted pattern. I continued with another stem, this time attaching the end point to the middle of the fern for variety. To enhance the perspective that one fern is behind the other, I'll make these leaves a bit smaller. On the bottom section of the vase, the white fern marks have become the positive space of the design, and the green is the negative space. I continued with the different sized and curved lines all the way around, also continuing to break through the border into the white area of the vase. I don't want to forget about the top section of the vase. I decided to divide that up into fifths using my trimming spinner which has division marks on it. In between those five divisions, I marked dots right along the edge of the top section. I then drew lines down into leaf shapes. I marked another row in between the first leaf shapes and drew more leaf shapes. Now all I needed to do was carve out those lines. I then added a little detail to each leaf for interest. Now I wanted to find the positive and negative spaces in the white area. This time I'll fill in the positive carved spaces with the green color. This will create a tension between all three of the vase sections. When the slip is dry, I can go back and gently trim away any slip that has gone outside the lines to clean it up. Now here it is, all carved and cleaned up. I think it's visually interesting, and I have this urge to pick it up and feel that carved texture too. I liked it so much, I did one more, this time with a purple slip. I even added little slip trail dots along the top leaves. There's an overwhelming and unlimited amount of choices to make when constructing and decorating pottery, but if you use these guidelines, it'll help you to narrow down those choices to where your pottery will take center stage. Thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio.